Hello, and welcome to a very, very, very special episode of Let's and Glory. My name is Will. And I'm Bronwyn. As Will said, this is a very special episode of Let's and Glory. We are having our very first interview, and today we are joined by Jessica Fund and Josh Santian. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for doing this. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for having us. So, um, I guess we'll just jump right in. So, uh, a lot of avid figure skating fans, including me and Bronwyn and our other co-host, Kathy, who unfortunately co-host is Kathy, who unfortunately couldn't be with us tonight, have uh, been watching you two skate and, and grow in a really short uh, period of time. So, and a lot of those same fans have been wondering how you two met. So, Sure, sure. Go ahead. You take this one. How do we meet? Well, um, I mean, we've kind of, like, known each other for a while. I mean, we both competed against each other with previous partners. Um, in JGP Lake Placid in 2012, we competed against each other. So we've kind of known each other, but we didn't, like, we were never interacted until really this year when um, Josh messaged me about a tryout after Nationals, and that's when I really started talking. Yeah, um, you know, I had seen her around the competitions, obviously, competing against her. Honestly, I don't think I had said more than hi, really. Um, I competed against her for the first time in San Jose in 2012, and we competed against each other again and like she said, just be like Placid and in Omaha. But we never even did any small competitions against each other, really. So we never really got to know each other before that. Um, I had known a little bit about her before the season, um, especially because I skated in Colorado Springs uh, starting in the 2014 season, and that's where she trained for her singles before. Mm -hmm. um, so you know, the people there knew her, and uh, also the skaters there knew I was going to be looking for a partner following last season. So you know, someone they brought up, oh. like, yeah, let's get Jessica. She's really good. She can jump. I can jump. <laughs> um, and maybe you guys can do triple lutzes or something awesome like that. <laughs> And, you know, f funny enough, I, I, I had, you know, it was a long time coming that I was going to be splitting with my previous partner. We, we knew that. It wasn't like a surprise to the internationals. We had talked about it for a while, um, but we wanted to finish out last season. And so um, Delilah, I had Delilah contact Lyndon. Mm -hmm. uh, I have a trial with Jessica. And, and you know, we, we decided, yeah, we'll, we'll, you know, we'll talk about it when the season's over. And, and you know, Jessica, Jessica actually saw my old partner Olivia at Starbucks, mm -hmm. and while while I was still skating with Olivia, and, and Olivia said, "Hey, Josh is going to be available next season if you want to yeah. skate with him." <laughs> 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 yeah. <There's an> opening. <laughs> All right. No, that's actually really interesting. I hadn't known about that. Um, so moving on really quick, I mean, you paired up this year in April, and by October, you were on the Grand Prix. That's a huge step forward. Um, and what was your experience like at Skate America this year in Milwaukee? Like, not only competing, but also just the atmosphere being such a at such a high level competition. Um, you know, it's it was nuts. It was it almost it felt like nationals. Almost, but it was yeah. it was September, October. It was October, and it felt like nationals. Being downstairs, being in this big arena, we're never in a big arena like that unless it's nationals. And it was it was a really cool experience. You know, a lot of good competitors there. Yeah, obviously, it was really, really exciting. Like you said, it was like nationals, but to skate against some of the best in the world and to be there for us, like we even when we were there, we still couldn't believe it. It was just like. It was really cool. Yeah, um, you know, and, and competing against teams like like Sui and Han, who like I think are like probably the best in the world, and Solo and Klimov, who won the Grand Prix final, and like like really the the, the top top of the top was was it was a really good experience, and it was it was a, a really hopefully like a, a glimpse in, into into what we can accomplish. Yeah. This made us realize our potential. Uh -huh. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For sure. And what were what were some of what did you guys feel were um, some of the advantages and disadvantages of having to regroup for Skate America so quickly after Autumn Classic? Um, 
I mean, advantages, there is definitely an advantage that we didn't really have that break of, um, you know, like, competition's over, like, let's take a break, and, like, your, your mental game kind of, you know, you relax. But we didn't have time for that, so we were still amped up for Skate America, and we were still excited and ready to go, and we just came off of Autumn Classic and with our first international medal, so we were, like, more motivated to compete and to skate well and really, like, work harder towards our goals, so that was... Yeah, that was good. Yeah, I mean, it was it was an advantage to to not have to like to work for we we were working for months or you know we had in our minds Autumn Classic and so we were working towards that and it was good to not have to spend a whole another month and a half working towards another event and instead it was just part of our training it was part of our training for Autumn Classic came out in Skate America so I think it was a big advantage mm -hmm. um, really honestly. Disadvantage-wise, I mean, I, I can't think of anything really. It was, it was, it was a blessing to be there. No, that's great. No, that's great. And that's something we had something actually talked about, about on lots on of Um, um we, we had know. mentioned that you guys had um definitely worked really hard um to regroup so quickly after such a short period of time. We were very impressed by how well you skated. Also, um, we actually talked about that. Um, and what, would you, what did you learn about yourself as a team following Skate America, like your strengths and your weaknesses? Um, you know, I think having competed at Adam Classic beforehand, a week beforehand, and, and then competing again at, at Skate America, we did four more or less clean programs between the two events. Um, and I think... We learned. I, I, you know, obviously, I hadn't done many competitions with her before that, and I learned, you know, that she's a really strong competitor. Uh, she's very determined, and and that I think I think we, we both are, and, and that mm -hmm. if we put our mind to it, that that doesn't mean we have to skate perfect every time, but that that we can really we can really do what we put our mind to. Yeah, I have to agree with that. I mean, I definitely learned how strong of a competitor he is, and what he's capable of doing, and, you know, we've never, we neither one of us have ever competed at such, like, a high, high level before, you know, we've never done a Grand Prix, we've done Junior Grand Prix, but it was so different, and to learn how one another reacted to um, getting to compete at such a big event, it really, it made us stronger as a team. And building off of um, their strengths as a team, one of the things that a lot of people have uh, remarked about you guys is your incredible uh, technique, especially in your side-by-side -side jumps. Um, so what strategies, if anything in particular, have you guys uh, employed to attain this um, uh, technical prowess? Um, you know, the jump stress, I, you know, Jessica, like I said, she... She went to national as a single skater. I went to national as a single skater. Um, we're both classically trained in our technique, and, and we have a similar technique style, honestly, from yeah. like day one, session one of the tryout. Mm -hmm. It was as close as, as it is now together. Like, mm -hmm. um, I think, like personally, like I did little pairs when I was juvenile, nothing big, uh, when I was really young, and, and I, I spent a lot of time like skating with another person, and I think that, that just having that, like, has helped me, like, develop a sense of unison, and I think we have some, the similar styles helps us out with a similar technique. Yeah, we definitely have very similar technique, and I was very good at, um, you know, like, adjusting to timings, too. Um, so as soon as we started jumping together, we both, like, it's very synchronized and everything. And I think for me, too, having, like, knowing that um, he is going to be spot on every time, that, like, gets me motivated to hit my jumps every time, too. It makes me work harder, so, because I know he's going to be able to do it. Definitely. It's, it's very motivating yeah. having, having a partner that, that I know is, is, is going to nail it no matter what. Like, honestly... Um, I've, gotten a, I've gotten a lot of compliments and comments about, about how solid our jumps are, 
together. And, and last year, at Sectionals, my previous partner, I, I missed my sound both programs. But, you know, it's just the difference in, in having um, someone next to me who I know is going to do it no matter what. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. um, and I, like I said, we've talked about just like your synchronicity is also very good for a brand new pair. Um, but what are you looking to improve going into nationals after um, having competed at Skate America and the Autumn Classic and sectionals? Um, well, you know, I think there's nothing technically for or from the technical side that that we are trying to bring up too much from those competitions to this one. But really, we want to improve our component mark. Yeah. Um, it's, been a, it's been a big goal for us to try and connect more with the music, and keep our speed up. Um, I think at sectionals, we kind of died a little bit in the program, and we want we want to like keep the spirit of the program, keep the character of the program, and keep the connection with the music throughout the whole thing. Yeah, we've definitely been working really hard on our um, on the component side of our programs and trying to interpret the music more and connect with each other and the audience. And that's I mean that's been our one of our weaknesses this year because we've been so focused on the technical. But since we know we have the technical, we've been working more towards components, and I think that's that's definitely a goal for nationals to improve that. Definitely. And then Will and I were also talking about this earlier. Um, your guys' music choices this season are actually pretty uncommon in the skating world. I've never heard a team use um, Gravity by Sarah Bareilles, or I'm pretty sure your long program music up, Prince Igor, isn't exactly well known either. What chose you guys to chose this, choose this music? Um, Amanda, Evora, and Jim Peterson selected our music for us. And, you know, they yeah. came to us with the music. They didn't say, they didn't say, hey, this is your music. You know, that was, that was one of their music yeah. suggestions. And, and we like those choices, and so we went with them. Um, I I really like the contrast in the two programs. Mm -hmm. Very, very different from each other, and I think especially as a new team, we want to try different styles and see what fits us the best. Um, and, and, and going on that subject, you know, like for our, I reached the Christmas show last month, and, and we skated to, uh, Carol of the Bells by Transiberian Orchestra against something completely different. That's just exciting. we didn't we didn't know if we would skate well to it or poorly, but we wanted to just see how we skate to this style of music. It was our first season. We want to see we want to try everything out and see what fits us best. And that way, moving forward, going into hopefully future seasons where we're aiming for worlds and and, and whatnot, and then we know what we're good at. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Now moving forward. Um, you guys train in Florida with um, pretty sizable pairs. It's pretty well known now, Perry, uh, pairs training center, if you would. Um, what's it like having, for example, Tara Kane and Danny O'Shea, who are the bronze medalists from last year's nationals, and other pairs teams contribute to your training dynamic? Um, it's great. I mean, I came from a training environment that it was very independent. It was all up to you, like your workouts and everything. There wasn't much organization with scheduling. Um, and I didn't have any other high-level teams to really like motivate each other or to work with. And so moving here was like a huge change, but it was having getting to train every day with some of the best pairs in the country. Country. It's really, really motivating, and we're all so supportive of each other, and we get to push each other every day and cheer each other on, and, you know, it just, like, at the end of the day, we're all there for each other, and it makes us a better athlete every day, so it's really great. Yeah, um, you know, in my previous training facility, I was in Colorado Springs with Delilah, and that was that was a really good training facility as well. Um, I like this one a lot, too. Like she's, and that's really good. It helps you uh, stay committed to your goals and stay focused, really. Um, you know, in Colorado, the stuff was all there for me to do. I didn't really do it. It wasn't, wasn't, wasn't organized to that point. And, you know, I feel like I'm definitely in better shape now, and, and, and I'm, in a, I'm, in a, I'm in a better place to, to achieve my goals. And that's, that's not putting down anything for Colorado Springs. I think I was a great coach. And, and runs, runs a great program, and I think if I followed it correctly, I probably would have been in a good place too, but I didn't. And so now I'm here, and I'm in a good place here. 
Yeah, building off of that, both of you mentioned the sort of lack of organization in your two player training engagements. What um, about uh, the way that Jim and Lyndon um, on your camp in Florida, what what makes it so organized and, uh, and efficient? Um, I mean, everything, like we have a, a schedule every day. It's the same every day that we follow. You know, we skate from 9.10 to 10.10, and then we stretch from 10.30 to 11, and then we do a single session from 11.30 to 12.15, and then we do another pair session, and then we have workout every day at 2.40 to 3.40, or on Tuesdays and Thursdays we do ballet at that time. So, you know, it's like, and it's mandatory. If you don't do it, you're going to get a talk. <laughs> um, and... I mean, it's mandatory, so everyone does it. Like, nobody has a choice, and it really keeps you on top of your game and, like, keeps your goal in mind. So it's, it's super organized, super yeah. structured. And, you know, in in Colorado, too, I mean, I was, I was told to, to, you know, do work on Tuesday and Thursday, do this, do that. And sometimes it would, sometimes it wouldn't. It's just, like, here, when, if, if you don't do it, they know. Mm -hmm. they, they're, they're like they're aware, and it's not not like I have any desire to not do it, but there are people who sometimes show up and 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 they they'll get called out and everyone knows and then, you know. yeah everyone and everyone does it together too so that's really really cool too it's very team oriented mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. definitely um and then. Going off of that a little bit, what ha what are some of the things you've learned from training in Florida? Since this is, this is relatively new to both of you. Um, well, I think point in your skating and, and you're not learning too many new technical things. Like, you know, she's done a third triple side before, she's done a third triple loop before. You know, I, I've done a lot of these technical elements before. But it, it, it's more about... Um, Coming together with our styles of skating and and coming together as a team and learning to match our styles artistically, I think. Yeah. I think there there's uh there's you know every every week we do a competition simulation and that helps prepare us for for nationals or for whatever competition is coming up. Where we do our six minute warm up and we're all in costumes and then we go in random order we do our, our programs. And after that, then we all get together and we have a meeting and um, Jim Peterson will do an initial talk and then Lyndon will talk about levels and Amanda will talk about this and Cindy Caprell, who's the jump coach for the rink, will, will talk about something else too. And even even our fitness trainer is even in on some of those meetings and will talk about, like, mm -hmm. you look tired. Yeah, you know? he'll talk about, like, the mental, <laughs> the mental game. The mental it. game and, and, yeah, and... Mm -hmm. and you know that focus on the overall package is is has been a really good thing that we've learned here. Yeah, I think it's really opened up our eyes to you know like possibilities and what what we're really capable of and how much really goes into it. You know, and you can't like you, it just shows that we like you can't get away with not doing things and you always have to you know look at every little detail and everything. So. As we've seen, uh, uh, one of the most uh, apparent struggles that you two have faced is gathering funds uh, for training. Um, so how, how difficult um, is it to balance a attempting to acquire funds with training itself? It's like that's, that's probably the biggest struggle, um, honestly. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, um, I, we're at the rink seven hours a day, about five days a week. This is 35 hours a week. And then, you know, I'm working 40 hours a week. Last week I worked 49 hours. You know, just depends. Uh, and then I, I go to school half time, online. Of course, I don't have time for real school. And uh, you know, she does her schooling also. Um, it's really hard, really, really hard to juggle. I mean, and I can see the difference in, like, you know, some by some magical luck I had today and yesterday off of work and 
And when I came in today for skating, it was like I was so rejuvenated. Being on my second day off in a row. It's like I could skate much better, I had energy. It was amazing. So easy to get through a long program when I had like six hours of sleep. You know, and, and mm -hmm. I had it. And I, I got I got this I got this this Fitbit for Christmas. And and it's like, oh my god. <laughs> In like ten miles some days, just walking around at work and stuff. And uh -huh. when I don't have that, that that stress on me, it's 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 much it's much easier, definitely much easier to, to skate and yeah. skate well. Well, definitely glad that um you have first of all that skating just helps relieve all that stress for you. Um and also i we've really respected how open you've been about trying to gather funds and um, your struggles with that. Um, what what are some things that you both have done to help acquire funds for your skating? Um, I mean, Josh and his father made a website for us, for Josh and I, and I think we've, like, we've both been promoting that, and on our website we have the Support Us link, which leads you to our GoFundMe. Um, and we, we try to promote that and to add new things, new videos. Like every week we do like a little vine that he posts. And it's just like a little video of our skating, like a trick or something. And we try to keep people coming back to our website to learn about us and then to make the decision if they want to support us. Um, to try to get them not just for financial reasons, but to try to get them involved with our skating as well. Yeah, I, I think that if, if we want mm -hmm. people to contribute to us, that they they have to know who we are. Yeah. Um, and so I, I made the website so that people could, could get to know us, being that is our first season. Like, a, B, you know, I who am I and, and who is she? Like, like we we haven't done anything. Not not together, not alone. We haven't done anything. And mm -hmm. so 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 getting to know us. Uh, getting to see videos of us, um, and if they like us, then 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 they'll know our cause, and they'll probably they, I think they would they would want to contribute to us, and so um, like she said, I, I made that website for that reason to spread the word about us. Honestly, at work, I I give out our website to a lot of people. I give it I I'm a, I'm a server. I give it out to my tables all the time, and it's, mm -hmm. I don't explicitly say like go on there to support me. I say go on there check me out. Because that's that's what it's for. It's it's check us out. It's not it's not give me money. It's it's check us out. Mm -hmm. And you know there's like she said there's the GoFundMe and there's the New England Amateur Skating Foundation mm -hmm. link for other people too. The that one um, New England Amateur Skating Foundation is a uh, for those who don't know it's a it's a group that people and organizations can donate to. Um, and since it's a charity, it's a tax deductible donation. Um, so it's more attractive to donate to, but it's also it's a little bit more of a hassle because you have to print out a form and mail it in. It's not as automatic as GoFundMe where you just put your credit card number in. But for like businesses or charities that are donating, that's that's like the route they go. Mm -hmm. And 100% of the donation goes to the like donation. <laughs> to, to 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 yeah, it goes to the skater. Yeah. Um, and with GoFundMe, it's like so GoFundMe takes five percent, and then like. The organization that processes the transaction takes another little bit, and so it's like any New England Amateur Skating Foundation is the best way. It's just it's a little it takes a little bit longer to do it. Uh, we we reached out to you know um, some of her family members. I don't have a very large family, so it's not very many people in my family to reach out to. Um, honestly, I even I even talked to my boss about it, and he's consider he's considering it. My my boss told me that somebody called Bonefish Girl Corporate. Telling them because I work at Bonefish Grill, and and he says he said somebody called asking about sponsorship, and I was like cool, you know. So, so I was like, so I, I I talked to him later to like find out more because he's kind of in a hurry when he told me, and he's and I'm like okay, so what are we seeing? Like somebody called, they want to sponsor me. Tell me more. Like I want to know the details, and he's like, no, somebody called and said we should sponsor you. Was that you? <laughs> and I was like, no, that wasn't me. <laughs> I was, I was like, can you get any more details? Like, well, that's all I know right now. I'll find out more from corporate. I'm like, okay, well, maybe you should consider it. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> well, maybe we'll see you at Nat's, um, sponsored by Bonefish Grill. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you could get like a little jumpsuit like the NASCAR racers do, you know? Absolutely. <laughs> I'll wear badges on, yeah. Need some Wonder Bread face paint or something. <laughs> <laughs> um, and have you received? Have there been any other um, regular financial supporters like like that, um, other than through your GoFundMe, who have been um, staunch uh, uh, donators? Um, we so on our GoFundMe, I I I put on an offline donation as well. You know, like it would only like show, only only someone who was looking for it would see it, but. I wanted to put it on there because it's you know it is helping us reach our goal towards our GoFundMe goal. So I put it on there. Um, one of the two two local skating fans uh, came down to see us. They went to Ski America and they came down to see us at our Christmas show. And they contributed to Tara and Danny as well. And when they met us, they liked us because we we're really likable. <laughs> and uh, yeah. And they decided to make a donation to us, and that was, that was really nice. And we actually just had dinner with them. Yeah. So they're really cool people, and they made a donation to us. And also, one of Jessica's uncles. Yeah. Um. One of my uncles has always been a very, very supportive of my skating, and um, he has donated to me before. Um, but he just recently made a very generous donation to Josh and I, and that was that was very nice. Right. Well, we're definitely glad to hear it. Now, we're going to move on to our final segment. We're very excited about this. You will be the first inaugural um, <laughs> Let's in Glory hot seat. We yeah. are going to, we're going to plan and do this for every um, interview that we do. We're just going to ask five quick, simple questions, really fun. Um, so let's get started. Our first question, if you could skate to any song, no limitations, what would it be and why? And both of you can answer separately or together. Hmm. Uh, <laughs> oh gosh. How long do I? Is there a clock? I like... Do I have a clock? Do I have, like? Oh, no, no. There's no. There's no clock. <laughs> hot seat. Hot seat. Well, he doesn't lose turn. How about like Sir Mix a Lot? Baby's got back. <laughs> That's okay. That? If you want to skate to that, I mean, <laughs> who are we to judge? <laughs> Uh, do you have I any? Love that. Oh my god, that'd be awesome. <laughs> uh, what is? Uh, you have an answer? Oh, did you have an answer, Jess? You let me have my <laughs> answer. I answer yeah. it. You can't take my answer. <laughs> <laughs> what? Next question. Okay. Okay. And what is your favorite element to perform, either individually or together? Element. Throw triple south. I like that one because I don't have to do that much. <laughs> uh, um, you know, let me think. Either together or separately. Um, well, like my favorite jump is double axel. I really like double axel. It's so easy. But um, favorite element. I mean, I've always been kind of the show off type. So I really like uh, when we do the press from the lunch. It makes me look really strong, and so I like that. It's fun for me. I think chicks take that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, what is something that most people wouldn't know about you? Jessica, let's start with you. Something most people wouldn't know about me. Um, hmm. I have, like, the best dog in the world. <laughs> <laughs> um, That's not that interesting. I know. <laughs> I don't have an interesting social life. Uh, um, I'm, try, I'm trying to think while you're thinking, so <laughs> you, keep, you keep talking. I, I don't know. Think. Um, something most people don't know about me. Most people don't know about you. I have an older brother who lives in Colorado. Um, he is 23, turning 24 this year. Um, same age as me. Yeah, same age yeah. As, as you. Um, I also have an older brother, but that's not that interesting. I have no um, idea. Let me think. I know. <laughs> I'm not um, an interesting person. <laughs> I really, I really like um, 
going to endless food things. Endless food is like my shindig. I love it. I feel like most people know that about me. Yeah, most people <laughs> might know about me, but I'm not sure. Hey, I, mean, I didn't know that about you. <laughs> last time we went to a pizza buffet, I had 19 slices. Plus, I had like pasta, like two plates of pasta, and breadsticks and cinnamon rolls and stuff. Yeah, he can eat a lot. And then one time I had 14 enchiladas in one sitting, <laughs> and dessert, and then another dessert. And then, I don't know, the records just keep going. I, I like to challenge myself. To put your... I just like challenge myself in general. You so. need to put your... Go ahead. Uh-huh. You yeah. need to put your face, like, on the wall of, like... Great eaters if like a restaurant has some sort of food challenge or something. Oh, <laughs> I'm, sure would, I'm sure you would think to me. I, I've tried <laughs> I tried the Buffalo Wild Wings challenge where you eat the really spicy wings, you know? I didn't mm -hmm. I, I didn't mm -hmm. I didn't yes. I, I I I feel like it was unhealthy. <laughs> I was like sweating and like I had the chills. I don't know. It's just a good idea. <laughs> oh, it's too funny. Yeah, no, I can't I can't do those things either. Um, who are your guys' favorite skaters? I'm sorry? Who are your guys' favorite skaters? Uh, who are your favorite, favorite skaters? skaters? Um, hmm. I really, really like um, Eliana and Robin, um, the German. I really love their skating, and like, I always love their programs and their choreography, and they're just always, I always rooted for them and looked up to them. Um... Kind of took me aback with her pronunciation of Aliona, but that's okay. Oh, whatever. <laughs> um, I, you know, I I like good skating. That's for sure. Um, you know, new wave of skaters, singles or pairs. Like, I I really like Sweden Han right now. They they're a really strong team. I think Chinese teams in general have gotten really good. And and I was saying someone earlier that Shen and Zhao are my favorite team. Of all time, very strong. They they grew into a very strong artistic team, and their their programs are very memorable, very good. And from a technical side, they're great too. Um, singles wise, you know, I I, I started as single skater, so she. I mean, I think we have, almost all of us did. So I, I still admire single skating quite quite a lot. I I really like. Um, Shoma, Shoma is like so good this year. I, I watched him, and it's like amazing. Mm -hmm. Skating, skating is really strong for such a young kid. Mm -hmm. um, and growing up, I I, I loved Alexia Gudin when I was mm -hmm. a kid, and and I started skating because I saw Scott Hamilton on TV, and and, <laughs> and I was like, that's cool. I want to do that. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> No, that's awesome. And I think we'd agree with you on pretty much all of those picks, honestly. <laughs> now, our last question, what would you two be if you weren't skaters? Or what would you do when you're done with skating? Okay, like what would I be if I wasn't a skater? It's like, like an animal? Or like... <laughs> I mean, if you really wanted to be an animal. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, we accept all answers. <laughs> um... Go ahead. Can we go first? Okay. Um, I mean, if I had never started skating, probably, honestly, would have been, like, a hockey player. <laughs> <laughs> My parents both really wanted me to play hockey when I was, like, four, so she I have done that for a little bit. She is kind of the boy in this part. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, I mean, when I'm done skating, Depending on like how old I am um, when I'm done, I might want to do shows, or I might want to, you know, like um, I'm interested in criminal psychology. Getting in, uh, majoring in psychology would be really cool for me. She really likes um, Dexter. That's why. <laughs> no, that's not why. I do like the show though. But I mean, I think doing shows would be really fun for, I mean, maybe like a year or two after I skate when I'm done. Um, if I, like, if I had never started skating, it's a hard question to answer. I think I would be an athlete of some sort. I've always been drawn to challenges and competitions, and I think that kind of goes with having an older brother, you know, always yeah. wanting to compete against him and, and do better and, and whatever. So I, I've always been a competitive person, you know, uh, in, in my... 
When I was in Colorado, I, I actually haven't even done it since we moved here. He's been way too busy. But I, I, mean, I used to play basketball a few times a week just just for fun. I'm not not very good, but I love playing. Um, so just like sports in general, like maybe football or something. Um, soccer. I probably would have played soccer. You would have played soccer. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm going to school right now for business. Um, why? I don't know why, but just because. It seems, seems, seems like a good idea. Like there's a lot of things business encompasses. Um, you know, and after skating, and she's talking about doing shows, I mean, I definitely want to do shows. I, I mean, hopefully we're good enough that we can do, like, Champions on, Champions on Ice and that kind of stuff. I would love to do shows in Europe because, you know, being paid to be to go around Europe sounds really cool. And I want to do cruise ship shows, and I want to do Disney, and then settle down and do whatever whatever life takes me to do. Hopefully... Um, I guess if I wasn't a skater, I would like to be like I don't know a millionaire or something. That's not the idea. <laughs> that I mean, the job I mean, don't we all? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, that wraps up the hot seat. Is there anything we else? Survived. You guys? We survived. Yeah, our first interview. We made it. <laughs> oh, I meant the hot seat, but I guess and the, the hot interview. seat. <laughs> All right. Is there anything you guys want to add before we sign off? Um, I don't think so. No, I don't think All so. All right. Okay. So I will link to um, Josh and Jessica's uh, site below, as long as as well as their Twitters and their GoFundMe page. Um, and we are definitely looking forward to seeing you guys at nationals um, coming up. And just so you know, you guys are on both of our fantasy teams. <laughs> no pressure, but I haven't seen the fantasy groupings yet. I, I don't know. I don't know how that works. Are we in group B or C? You're in. I think you're a B pick. B pick. Yeah. I, I, I picked you as my B pick. All right. <laughs> awesome. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you guys. Yeah. Thank you for, for being here. This is so wonderful. Yeah, that's fun. Yes. Awesome. That's fun. Cool. All right. Well, thank you so much for coming on, seriously. Um, this was definitely a lot of fun. We're really excited to have our first interview with you guys. Yay. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. All right. For Lutz and Glory, I'm Bronwyn. I'm Will. And we'll see you next time. Bye.